Hey, this is Antonio. Welcome back to my channel. Let's have some fighting words. So in this video, I want to talk about Canelo Alvarez versus Dimitri Bivol. We've all been waiting for it. We were all curious to see who Canelo Alvarez was going to go up against. And it looks like Dimitri Bivol is the guy. He's the guy. And quite frankly, he's a terrifying guy. And I think he's somebody who can give Canelo problems. Uh, my only issues are how long can he give Canelo problems? Um, Bivol's very, very, very technical, which is a good thing. However, I don't think somebody who's very technical is the best type of guy to fight somebody like a Canelo Alvarez. I think you need somebody who's very creative. I think you need somebody who can think outside the box and can be willing, would, would be willing to back up, would be willing to, to, to shift around, would be willing to do different things. And not just use the same punch over and over and over again. Well, when you're as strong as Dimitri Bivol, you can get away with things like that. You can be so technical. You don't have to have a certain level of creativity. Um, you can afford to continue to push forward because you hit that hard. However, I, I just think Styles make fights. And I think he is tailor-made for Canelo. Granted, Canelo makes it past round five. He's Taylor Mead. However, Canelo's chin has been tested time and time again, and he's proven that that thing is like rock. So I'm going to assume, can Bivol take him out? Yeah, I, I mean, anybody can knock anybody out. I don't care who you are. Anybody can knock anybody out. The question is, will he be able to? That's the question. Can he handle the head movement and the slipping of Canelo Alvarez? I don't know. I don't know. I, I will tell you this, though, to make me suggest that he cannot. Triple G throws a lot more punches in a round than, than he does. And Triple G was finding it very hard to hit him. So there you go. You know, that would be my first thing to Bavall. You need to step up your, your, your punch output if you're going to give yourself a real fighting chance. Because you're going to need to do that. You're going to have to let a few of them go and, and just be comfortable with letting them go. And the question is, you know, like, how well does he really take a punch? We're going to find out. I get it. You've been fighting bigger guys. And maybe you, you would make the argument, well, Canelo's not their size. So therefore, if he can take a punch from a guy that size, he can surely take a punch from a guy that size. Okay, sure. I, I hear you there. Um, however, there were spots where Canelo backed down Triple G, you know, so it's just like, if that's where you're going with it, I don't want to use the other fight with Canelo because honestly, you know, dude was old and dude was out of shape. So in a drunk, so I'm not really going to use him. But uh, he did have spots where he was backing up Triple G and he had clear spots where he got landed on by Triple G and didn't even budge. Canelo didn't even budge. There were shots that Triple G landed on him that would have taken other guys out and he didn't even budge. So I'm going to assume that Bavall is going to like really have to unleash a lot to if he is to get Canelo Alvarez out of there. But again, that would go into play if, number one, you're going to do throw enough punches in the round. If you're willing to be creative, if you're willing to take a back step. Sometimes you taking a back step, people, does not mean that you're afraid of somebody. It does not mean that... Um, you know, he's winning. It doesn't mean any of that. Sometimes you need to just take a back step and assess what is going on. Assess the person in front of you. Or sometimes you just need to take a back step so you can try something new. That's it. That's it. Or give your opponent a new look. If you're constantly coming forward, like Baval is in all his fights, if you constantly shoot that double jab, which the Baval does, in the majority of his fights, he hasn't had that many, but in the majority of his fights, it's that double jab. He's kind of... it. Let me say it like this. In terms of skill versus Canelo Alvarez, Baval is a, is a novice. Let's just call it what it is. He's a novice. And bec he's only... But he's he's had very much success. However, he's had so much success because he hits that hard. That's why he's had that much success. You're talking about Canelo Alvarez coming from a small weight class who's going to be able to outslip you. He's definitely going to have more speed than you. And punch power, you guys 
could possibly be Eden. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's another reason why I wanted the Triple G fight, because I felt like Triple G would have been more of a, a contest to Canelo. Now, I'm definitely not ruling out that Bavol could dismantle Canelo Alvarez. He could. He absolutely could. Um, anything's possible. He could. Will he? I, I don't know. I, I, I seriously doubt it, but I don't know. Anything can happen. And quite frankly, you're talking about a guy who's fit, who's prime, in his prime, and he hits that hard. It's not the craziest thing in the world to fathom that he takes out Canelo Alvarez. That That's not <laughs> me just, you know, making stuff up out of air or, or whatever. That, that could happen. But when I look at the skill sets, I just don't think he's ready for this. Um, and I think a lot of, you know, you, you the matchmakers... I don't know, maybe even his team are just thinking, well, he's bigger and stronger. Big and strong does not mean you're going to want to fight people. That does not mean you're going to want to fight. And too many times have we seen just because somebody's bigger, you go, well, that guy is definitely going to. And then you look at the other guy, oh, he's definitely going to lose because look at it. And then you remember Ruiz and um, AJ. You know, who would have thought, you know, like who would have thought <laughs> Hercules would have been taken out by, but it, but it happened. So we can't look at somebody's size. We can't look at, you know, well, he hits hard because AJ hits hard. So you can't look at that. What we can put our trust in is history. Well, Canelo's history has shown that he can take on bigger guys and be largely successful. What we can put our trust in is Canelo's skill set. And he's shown that he's been able to make people miss consecutively, round after round, to the point where it frustrates people, to the point where people are a little hesitant to throw. Also, we got to factor in Canelo's body punches. You got to, Bivol is not the biggest on body punching. He's not. He will do it, but it'll be more like of a single shot or if something works, then he'll go for it. But it's not a, an overall game plan coming into the fight. He's not that guy. He he doesn't really focus on the body as much as Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez takes time to invest in some real estate, your body, in the opening rounds so that in the latter rounds, he can go for the kill shot. He's been He's just been investing in the body for like four or five rounds. He can go for kill shots in, in eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. He can do that. Baval's not going to do that. And I don't think it, Baval's experienced enough to do that. Um, another thing that, that worries me about this, I'd probably say is uh, Baval knows how to walk people down, but I don't feel like he knows how to cut off the ring. You know, so let's just say you can walk Canelo Alvarez down. You're not locking him in anywhere. You just He'll just skate out like... You know, like, and that that's the problem. You know, I, I feel like experience is going to be a huge factor in this. You know, I I don't really know if I should say this, but I'll say it anyway. I feel like Canelo Alvarez will do to Baval what Floyd Mayweather did to Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez fought Floyd Mayweather a little too premature. And I feel like Baval will be fighting Canelo Alvarez prematurely. And because of that prematurity, I don't see him coming out the victor. Um, you can't really tell much from body language. I, I did watch the press conference. Canelo Alvarez is actually a very respectable and to his opponents until they like take him off or something like that. And then Braval, you know, he's, you know, he's not the biggest on a microphone or anything like that. So it's just like, okay, there's not a whole lot there. It's It's hard to gauge. It's hard to gauge anything psychologically speaking when you deal with two of these types of indiv individuals. Of all coming from where he comes from, you know, a lot of the guys from that part of the world don't sh show a whole lot of emotion. You know, Triple G also, you know, he's like that. A lot of these guys just don't show a lot of emotion. So you can't really figure anything out, gauge anything, because they're not giving you anything to, to gauge off of. They're not giving you anything. Like, it's, you know, it's just straight stare, this this cold killer stare. We're not getting anything. You know, 
Canelo now, he kind of speaks like a businessman. Back in the day, he would talk like a fighter. But now it's like, you know, he kind of talks like a businessman. You know, if this is the right fight to make, let's make the fight. And da -da 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 -da. You know, he's coming into his own on the microphone. And also with, you know, him speaking more and more English and getting more comfortable with the language. So it's hard to gauge anything. You know, sometimes you can look at a guy in a press conference like, yeah, he's a little scared or he's a little timid or... These are the brightest lights that he's been down or, or whatever the case may be. And then you get guys where there's nothing. You, you you can't gauge anything. You can't tell anything. You know, well, speaking of AJ and Andy Ruiz, Andy was so humble. He was so, I, I don't want to say timid, but he was very timid of the limelight. Not of AJ, but of the limelight. You know, he was just a fish out of water. And it showed. When you look at Bivol, it's just like, Rocky Four, Ivan Drago, I must kill you. You know, like that's literally how he was. It was there's, that's just how he is. There's nothing there, so you can't really gauge anything off that. And to be totally honest, I don't think that's the safest way to gauge anything or to suggest who is going to win or going to lose a fight just judging by a press conference or somebody's facial expression. You know, you have no idea what that person is going through throughout the day. You don't know if their wife just called them. You don't know if their girlfriend just broke up with them. You know, you don't know anything. So it's. I think it's a silly way to try to gauge anything. But every once in a while, you can kind of look at a press conference and you can kind of tell, you know, where this individual is, is mentally. And it'll express itself physically. You know, maybe he'll keep playing with his pen or, or maybe he'll look down or, you know, maybe he'll stutter while he's trying to be talk trash or whatever the case may be. But nothing here. But those are my thoughts so far, you know, on this fight. I, I want to see this fight unravel even more. And I will soon be doing a fight breakdown individually for both fighters. But those are my thoughts. Drop your comments down below. As always, please like, please share, and please subscribe to my channel.